Hi everyone and welcome back to our color by number quilt along. I'm Caroline from SoCanShe.com and I'm so excited to share with you today a quilting design that is going to play on the directionality of the squares in our quilt and on those diagonal lines and it's just going to accentuate them and make them beautiful. Maybe you can see in the background my color by number quilt. You can maybe see those designs. I'm calling it a sunburst design, but it kind of also looks like a seashell. If you can see it back there, it's like second one up from the bottom, like that block right there, and then that block, and that block, and that block. Anyway, it's gonna be so much fun to quilt this. I'm going to show you how I quilted it first using a straight edge quilting template. Uh, that's my favorite way to quilt this design because it really helps me keep my straight lines straight. But if you not, are not quilting with rulers yet, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do it without quilting rulers and how you can use little things to help guide you like the edge of your free motion quilting foot to help you make the design just as beautiful. And honestly, if you do this design throughout your quilt without using rulers, then nobody who looks at your quilt has the other type of quilting to compare it to. So everyone is going to just love it and think it's beautiful. So let's hop right in and get to free motion quilting our sunburst design on our color by number quilt. To begin with, let's quilt some of these pretty starburst designs using the quilting ruler or the quilting template. This is my quilting template that has a nice straight edge. It also has a gentle arc if I wanna use it, but today I'm just gonna be using the straight edge. And I will also show you how to do this design without a quilting template, but to tell you the truth, this is my favorite way because the quilting ruler helps me get these nice straight lines. And you see, I have the ruler foot connected to my sewing machine. For the Bernina, it's the number 72. So, to begin with, I just did a tiny bit of marking before I quilted this little square. What I did was I marked a little arc here that is about three quarters of an inch away from the corner here. And this is going to help me know where to stop all of the little rays in my sunburst. Now I could go all the way to the corner, but when you do take your rays all the way to the corner, it creates a lot of thread buildup right here, which is just fine if you want that. But I really like this effect where I stop about an equal distance away from the corner and it makes this really pretty effect. It's especially pretty once I use my iron to remove the marks from my Frixion pen, which I will do when I'm done. So over here, I wanted to show you this one so you know what I'm doing. Over here, I'm just going to draw that little arc. It would be easier if I did this before I brought the quilt to the sewing machine, but of course I didn't. So I've got my needle in the corner here because when I finished this block, I ended up here and I traveled over here stitching in the ditch and then I traveled up here stitching in the ditch. So now I'm ready to start my next little sunburst which I'm going to quilt in this block up here. This color of fabric is traveling in a diagonal line now, so I'm just gonna travel up all the way to the edge of the quilt. Now, something we talked about before, just a quick refresher, the edge of the ruler foot is a quarter inch away from the needle. So whenever we put our ruler against the ruler foot, wherever the edge of the ruler is, the end of stitching is going to be a quarter inch away from that. So to begin with, I want to quilt a straight line that goes up and that ends a quarter inch away from this seam. And I'm gonna try a quarter inch away from this seam. It's not always easy to do this exact, even with a ruler. So of course I'm going to be very kind to myself and not stress out if I'm not perfect. So to do that, I'll place this edge of the ruler against the foot and then up here, this far edge of the ruler here is going to be right on the corner. So that means my line of stitching will be a quarter inch away from this seam. And in order to make my stitching end a quarter inch away from this seam up here, I'm going to try to stop when I see the edge of my foot right here touch the seam. Of course, this is like behind my sewing machine and just because of the view, it might not be exact, but 
we're going to try and then we're going to be happy with it no matter how it looks. So we've got it set up, ruler here against the foot, ruler up here against the corner. Okay, and then we're just going to quilt. There we go. Now I want to travel about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to, that looks good. Now I'm going to travel back. Now in this design, I want the ends of my sun rays to end. Each of them are gonna be about an eighth of an inch apart, maybe a little more or less, but about an eighth of an inch apart as they hit this little arc here. So keeping in mind that, that my needle is going to end up a quarter inch away from this. I'm just going to kind of imagine, I'm gonna move this not quite on the seam, a little bit back. You'll see all of this becomes intuitive the more that you quilt with rulers. So now I'm just going to quilt my way back and stop when I reach the line that I drew. Now I also want all of my rays here to be a pretty quarter inch apart. You see how nice that looks? So I'll use my ruler and I'll place the edge of the ruler right on the corner of the previous ray. And that means that as I stitch along the next ray, when I stop, that this corner will be a quarter inch away from that corner. So I'm just going to, once again, place this edge of the ruler against the foot. And the far edge here is right on the corner of my previous ray. And I'll just go ahead and stitch until I'm about a quarter inch away from the far seam. Maybe I was a little too close, but that's all right. Stitch about three quarters of an inch. And now I'll make my way back. Stopping when I hit my arc. And now once again, same thing. I'm just gonna keep repeating edge of the ruler against the foot, the other edge right on the corner of the previous ring. And this one's going to be kind of short. There we go. And then work my way back. Now, I love making the corner rays because they get to make this cool little shape as they go around the corner. So I'm going to start out the same way I did before. Ruler against the foot, edge of the ruler here against the corner of my previous ray. And I'll go here, stop at the same place, a quarter inch away from the edge. Now I just have a little ways I can go here because once again, I want to stop when the edge of my foot is a touching this seam. So that means the needle is a quarter inch away from the seam. So now I'm just going to travel down a little bit. And I could start using my ruler like this if I want, but since I'm really using this ruler here to measure the distance between these little spokes and where they are hitting or almost hitting my arc, I'm going to keep putting the ruler behind the foot. The great thing about using a ruler foot and a template or ruler is that you can really use it any way you want and put quilt in any direction you want because it goes all the way around. So I'm, but I'm going to use it like this. And let's just go back. And then move it till this is still touching. Move it till the corner of the edge of the template is touching the corner of my ray. From this angle, it's easier for me to see if my um, foot here is touching the seam. Of course I could turn my quilt all the way around any which way, but that's something that I love free motion quilting is that I don't have to turn my quilt around any which way. Because I can just quilt any which way. So here, okay, so this is my last little sun ray and I'm going to show you it's a little bit different. So I'm going to 
quilt down. I wanted to match this one up here. So this is the first one that I quilted and I would like my last one to be symmetrical and match it. So what I'm gonna do is just quilt down until the edge of my foot touches the edge of the seam. Because remember what I tried to do here is I tried to make this corner here a quarter inch away from either seam. So again, I'm gonna use the ruler foot to help me and know that my stitching will be a quarter inch away from this seam. And then when the edge of the ruler foot touches this seam, I'll know that my needle will be also a quarter inch away from that seam. So I'll just quilt to that point, okay? But now, if you remember, I started in the corner. So this last line that I quilt, I'm not going to quilt to my arc. I'm going to keep quilting all the way to the corner just to make it symmetrical. And if you remember, I need to, I can't put this edge on the corner here because then, here I'll do it this way, I can't put this edge here on the corner because then my stitching will end up being way down here, a quarter inch away. So I'm gonna put the edge of my ruler about a quarter inch away from this corner and I'm just going to puddle up, you saw me puddle up a little bit of quilt here so that I don't get stuck. And here we go. There we go. So I want you to see this block. I'm going to do some traveling. I'm gonna stitch in the ditch to get ready for my next little sunbeam block. And now I'll just grab a little travel iron and I will just iron away those friction pen marks and you see how pretty that sunburst is. So now let's do it in this block without the template. I just wanna show you that all of these, almost all of these designs are possible with or without a template. Now, obviously like this meandering design, we didn't use a template for, but there are so many free motion quilting designs that you are not limited to using a ruler or not using a ruler. So of course your results will be a little different. So I'm going to have to really concentrate on making my lines straight, but the process is still the same. And you know what? I'm glad that I still have this ruler foot on because I can still use it to imagine that my needle is a quarter inch away from the seam. Now you don't have to have a ruler foot to do this. So here is my regular free motion foot and the edge of the free motion foot here is also a quarter inch away from the needle. And a lot of times you will have free motion feet that aren't open like this and that might give you even more help to see, to make sure that your needle is a quarter inch away from your seam or wherever you want it to be. I like the open toed foot when I'm not using my ruler foot because then um, when I'm threading the needle, it's easy just to slip the thread under there. All right, so first, I want to aim for this little corner back here. If you remember, just like I aimed for this corner, I'm gonna aim for this corner, and I'm just going to, even more than ever now, it's important for me to keep both hands on the quilt and to just look where I'm going and just go slow and steady and go straight. Looks great. Now I'm going to go over a little ways and then down back to my arc. And then once more, going back over a little ways, down, back. And you see this time my lines aren't perfectly straight, but that's okay. more organic. Who doesn't love organic? I think you'll notice that doing this without a ruler is faster, which is why a lot of times if I'm in a real big hurry, I just pick designs that I can do without a ruler. And yeah, I would even do this 
design without a ruler. If I did it, if I didn't have the ruler version to compare it with, then nobody is even going to notice. Now I will use the ruler for the stitch in the ditch. I really love to use the ruler for my stitch in the ditch, but I just want you to take a look here. If I was not a fan of ruler quilting and I was going to sew this sunburst design without rulers all over my quilt and nobody had this super straight ruler lines to compare it to, I really think that it would still look gorgeous. Let's go ahead and remove those little lines so you can see how pretty it is. Remember, anyone who looks at your quilt and sees this beautiful design and this beautiful texture, they are going to love it and admire your talent. So go ahead, quilt some Starburst designs. I can't wait to see them. I hope you post them on Instagram and tag me, so can she. And if you are quilting along with this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more. We have three more quilt along videos in this series. So we'll have three more easy quilting designs to quilt and then we'll be done and we'll be able to see our beautiful quilts. So thanks so much for joining in. I'll see you next week. So that was the sunburst design. I hope you had just as much fun quilting it as I did. I wanted to point your attention to this quilt back here. I just finished it last night. I still need to write up the pattern and then I will post it to my blog, SoCanShe.com. I'm not sure what to name that quilt yet. I'm tempted to name it Starburst, but I think because of the colors and the stars, that's a little bit cliche, but who knows, maybe I will. So thanks so much for watching this video series with me. I hope you are quilting your color by number quilt and learning and practicing lots of new free motion quilting designs. If you're quilting along with us, please hit the subscribe button and like this video so you won't miss any more. You can visit my blog, SoCanShe.com, where I'll write a blog post also about what we've done today and with links to other free motion designs that we've done and everything you need to get started. So that link will be in the description below. So please share this with your friends if they want to have fun free motion quilting with us and I will see you next week.